started off with the upfront planning, right? Uh, in the first couple of lectures, we actually try to understand uh, what planning is, what are its advantages, and then we actually saw that planning occurs at various stages during the project. And we started off with the pre-project planning, right? We started off with the pre-project planning, and in, in that we said high-level planning is there. We prepare a business case. Uh, and if you remember, there are certain other strategic artifacts as well. Can you name some of them? Strategic uh, artifacts. Ma'am, Habiba must have taught you that. Yes, no? sir. Okay, yeah. So, so can you name some of them? Uh, sir, artifacts would documents ki baat kare na, I vaguely remember. No, 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 sir. Uh, jo strategic artifacts the, uh, wo unki baat me kar raha hu. Okay, I thought that those documents. Uh, jo... Okay, okay, okay. If 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 you see, uh, if if you remember, strategic uh, artifacts were those artifacts uh, that actually are created before the project is started, right? Before or uh, during project start, right? For example, project charter is one of them. Business case is another uh, uh, strategic benefit. level artifact. Then benefit man benefit realization or benefit management plan is one of them. Then there was a project vision statement. Do you remember that? Product yes, roadmap or something? So these are the strategic artifacts that are created before the project is started. And then obviously this, this, all of these documents, they cover the high level requirements, high level assumptions, high level constraints and high level risk, right? And the end of this or the peak point uh, of, of, or the conclusion of all these, uh, you know, uh, planning activities is authorization of the project to a charter or any other authorization document right so then we started off with the pre-planning uh, sorry the upfront planning right and in that we said that early planning this is done after the project initiation and before we actually enter into execution and it would depend the level of detail uh, detail that we cover in this planning would depend upon which development approach or project life cycle we are using. Like in case of predictive life cycles, we try to plan almost everything right up front. Whereas in case of um, adaptive approaches, we plan to a varying level. Obviously, uh, those, those plans are of short term. Like for whole project, we'll keep the things at a very high level, and then we will actually plan things for different iterations, right? I hope you are clear about that. Are yes, you there? Sir. Okay, okay, right. So then, you know, uh, once we are done with the upfront planning, at the end, we get something, and that something is either a project management plan or a project backlog, right? In case of adaptive approaches, we get something called as project backlog. And if time permitted, actually we'll cover this topic, not time permitted, actually we will cover cover this topic in the scope planning area, you know, part of the uh, this course, maybe in this lecture or maybe in the coming lecture. And then there's another thing and that is replanning, right? And this replanning is done either because of the progressive elaboration or can someone tell me what is progressive uh, progressive elaboration sir jaise hmm? aapne bataya tha ki kuch work packages hote hain jo bhi hame uh, unke bare mein pata nahi hota ki usme kis level ka kaam required hoga uske milestones ka pata nahi hota hum usko further that was actually called as planning packages right 
अच्छा इस पे ना विल टॉक अबाउट दिस कॉन्सेप्ट व्हाट इज प्रोग्रेसिव कोलैबोरेशन व्हाट इज अ प्लानिंग पैकेज एंड व्हाट डू वी मीन बाय रोलिंग वेव प्लानिंग दीस थ्री कॉन्सेप्ट्स आर यू नो दे गेट कंफ्यूजिंग बिकॉज बिकॉज दे आर क्लोजली इंटररिलेटेड सो विल टॉक अबाउट दिस थिंग मे बी ड्यूरिंग दिस लेक्चर इंशाल्लाह दिस इज अ स्लाइड दैट आई हैव कैप्ट फॉर दिस दैट दैट विल मेक दीस कॉन्सेप्ट्स फर्दर क्लियर then changes resulting from monitoring and controlling now can someone tell me what do we what do we mean by this how does changes resulting from monitoring and controlling result in replanning you need to participate trust me <laughs> otherwise it would be very difficult for me to deliver this online lesson in in this silent mode right so these are the changes which we find during uh, the monitoring uh, affairs and then obviously if we come across this thing and then we feel these changes then we have to again plan it to do uh, to right. incorporate right. these changes right. within our initial so within, planning within the plan very right i i i hope you remember that in whole of the monitoring and controlling process group uh we actually compare our actual results with what was planned uh, there's a detailed lecture on this i had shared its recording as well uh and uh, I'll, i'll share it again today maybe after this lecture uh, if you want to understand the complete monitoring and controlling process group uh, that lecture would help you a lot right so if you remember in all of the uh, you know monitoring and uh, controlling process group in all the processes whether we are controlling the scope whether we are controlling the schedule or we are controlling the cost or quality or risk or anything else we actually compare our actual performance with what was planned and if there's a there's a difference if there's a difference and the difference is called as variance between the actual and plan then we check that is this variance uh within our threshold or it has gone so wild that it it has gone outside our threshold limit if the variance goes outside the threshold limit then we actually apply some corrective action right and that corrective action actually results in changes in the plan so because of that we need to replan things similarly changing requirements like customer may request us to change their scope to change the maybe uh, our schedule or to change the quality or something so because of those changing requirements uh, obviously we need to replan certain things so this was the overview uh, that uh, that that is about the planning that is done at various stages of a project right so now <clears throat> i have added this uh, i guess this was not there uh, in the in the lecture previous lecture Uh, but i have added this table and uh, if you remember this is the planning process group right this is the planning process group and the first process of pl planning process group is the develop project management plan so and this is in the integration management knowledge area and if you remember i had told you that integration management knowledge area is the project managers knowledge area right it integrates everything whatever is happening in 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 all of the knowledge areas the top uh, you know uh, knowledge area the integration management it integrates everything whatever is happening under it so in case of this process too in case of planning process group the first process is develop project management plan and how this plan is developed this plan is developed through various planning processes that are carried out in different you know knowledge areas and after the integration of all these steps we get one thing and that is develop a project management plan or we 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 obtain an agreed upon realistic project management plan at the end so whatever is happening here these are almost 24 processes if i'm not wrong the ultimate purpose of all these processes is to get one plan and that is a project management plan is it clear yes sir okay yes sir right. right so so whatever is happening here at the end it gives us a complete project management plan now 
here, if you see, sorry, these, I want you to please go through all these processes one by one. I have zoomed in the same picture. If you see here, the top process is develop project management plan, and then there are some processes related to scope, then some processes related to scheduling and so on. So let's have a look on these. The first one is the develop project management plan. And as I told you, or I have told you so many times that this plan in itself is nothing but just a blank folder, right? And in this folder, we provide our teams with two things. And one is what? The project development approach and the project life cycle, right? We tell the team about these two things and then we start our planning. And as a result of this, we will get 12 plans prepared and three baselines prepared. And all those plans and baselines would become part of this plan, correct? Yes, sir. sir, sir okay, right. So now let's have a look on this. What is like in project scope management? The first process here is plan the scope management, right? This is one process. Similarly, if you look at the schedule management here, the first process is plan the schedule management. And third is the cost management that I had taught you. And here the first process was plan the cost management, right? So all of these processes would give us some plan. Like in case of schedule management, we will get a schedule management plan. In case of cost management, we'll get a cost management plan. Similarly, in case of scope management, actually we get two plans. One is the scope management plan and the other one is the requirement management plan, right? This way we will get, you know, 10 plans of each knowledge area, like quality management plan would come from here. Resource management plan would come from here. Communication management plan would come from this process. Then risk management plan would come from this. Procurement management plan would come here and the stakeholder engagement plan would come from this process. Plus two other plans and what are those? Can you name those plans? The change management plan and the configuration management plan. Are you guys there? Yes, sir, I'm in there. OK, fine, That's right, good. right, right. So these plans would, you know, would become part of the project management plan. So with this, we will have like two other things and 12 plans. Now, what about the baselines? How we will prepare the baselines? Actually, the first thing that we do is we collect requirements, right? We collect requirements from all the stakeholders these would be quality requirements, safety requirement, product features, product requirement, documentation requirement, or other legal requirements. We'll try to administrative requirements. We will try to get all the requirements from the stakeholders here. Then we'll convert those requirements into a, in, into a scope statement in the process of defined scope. And then we will try to divide or break down that bigger scope into smaller manageable chunks. And we would call that that thing as WBS. I hope you remember that, right? And then the next process will enter into the schedule management plan. There will define the activities, we'll sequence them and so on. So this way we will carry out all these planning tasks one by one. Right. <clears throat> At the end of the day, we get one thing, and that is project management plan. This plan is, is, you know, is very important. However, preparing this plan requires a lot of time and effort. But trust me, if you'll spend that time and effort, you are going to get very good results. You are going to avoid so many delays and reworks and poor works and bad work. And actually, as a matter of fact, let's say if you spend 20 extra days in planning, it will save you from the delays of months that would occur if you didn't plan. Similarly, 
uh, it would save you from so many cost overruns, right? So it's always better to spend time and prepare a good project management plan, right? So uh, we had covered almost all of these things in the previous lecture. Mm, yes. I guess yes, Samayu had asked questions about this. Right, and this is this is what a plan would contain. It would have the 12 plans here. Then three baselines plus the combined baseline, which is called as the performance measurement baseline, which is combination of schedule, scope and the cost baseline and two other things that are life cycle description and the development approach, right? So this is what we get. We, we call it as project management plan. And that is the outcome of all the planning activities that are done. Achha, ab, now, what's the difference between project management plan and project documents? Can someone tell me? <laughs> project documents, document that is produced on project is called project management, project documents. And, and plans? Uh, project management plans. Actually, all the plans and the baselines, they are called as, you know, plans, right? All the plans, like I've told you the 12 plans that are part of the project management plan and the baselines, that becomes the part of project management plan. Whatever, whatever is created on the project other than these plans is called as a project document. You know, plans, we just lock it. Like once a project management plan is approved, we lock it. We don't change it without approval, uh, formal change request approval, right? How, however, in case of project documents, we keep updating these documents. They are not frozen. They are not locked. For example, risk register. This is a project risk document. Register and lesson learned. Lesson learned register. So whenever lesson, lesson we... Learned. Very right, sir. We will, whenever we will learn a new lesson, we'll just write that last lesson in the lesson learned register, and we don't need any approval for that, right? So project documents, anything, any document other than the project management plan that is created on the project and that we can change actually without the formal approval of the, uh, you know, sponsor or maybe the change control board, we can just change it actually we keep updating those and the project documents are you know uh, are created to support our management activities right for example why do we create a, a assumption and uh, issue uh, assumption log issue log or risk register or lesson learned register they are helping aids of project management correct and plan is created to uh, you know set a reference for your performance measurement it, it acts as a guide for your execution that this is the plan and according to this plan you have to perform and according to this plan your performance will be measured but in case of documents they are just helping uh, tools uh, for a project manager and team so these are some of the documents and plans that are written there there are almost 33 project various project documents that are created and obviously in project management plan there are 12 plans plus three baselines and then the combined baseline and two other things so these are 18 items in total and this is the planning process we we carried out an activity regarding this and i hope you remember that right now your planning would depend upon various factors the detail of planning the way of planning you know who will be doing this planning, this all depend and how frequently you will do this planning. All this would depend on various factors. The first two, that is project life cycle and development approach. This was the topic that we started in the last lecture, right? And this is actually a very important aspect, very important aspect. And I would like to, you know, spend some more time. Actually, this was the part that was not covered fully. And you had a lot many queries there too. So I'll just try to uh, quickly go through what we have already covered and then we'll move on to the leftover part. After that, we'll see how project deliverables, organizational requirements, market conditions, and legal or regulatory restrictions, how they affect uh, your planning, right? 
So first of all, project life cycle and development approach, how these two items affect your planning. So let's have a look on this. So there are, you know, different terms that are somehow confusing for many people. And those terms, you know, I, I guess you must be clear about these terms before we actually move forward and see how planning is done in different project life cycles. So what a project life cycle is? Can someone tell me? It is the sort of thing like predictive, iterative, incremental or agile. What sort of uh, cycle it will have? Which type of approach will be doing? That is the approach, I believe. Right, right. Actually, both of you are correct, right? Now, this is this is strange. And this is one of the confusions that is there or you might find there in the when you will read the books and articles. So let let me first clarify this thing. What is the difference between development approach and what is a project life cycle? Essentially speaking, a project life cycle is the it is the combination of the phases through which a project or combination of the steps through which a project would pass. Right? For example, if I have to construct a house, the first phase or the first step would be maybe let's say soil testing or maybe some documentation or paperwork and then the ground preparation or the laying the foundation work, then you know erection of columns, then maybe pouring the slab or maybe uh, you know finalizing the gray structure, then we start maybe other other phases. So these are the steps through which our project would pass, right? So we call these this this all all these steps or the combination of these phases through which project would pass as project life cycle. Our project would pass through these steps. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, now, sir. These okay. are the steps. Right. These are the steps, sir. Right. These are the steps through which our project would pass. For example, generally we would do some paperwork or feasibility or something, maybe design, architect design, in case of construction project, then we prepare the you know ground for that or laying the foundation part comes, then laying the gray structure or you know construction of gray structure, and then uh, you know finishing work or maybe phases? electrical phases. Yes, phases or the steps, right? Essentially speaking, the ter the technical term used for that is phases and that I'll cover in the coming slides as well, right? So these are the phases through which our project would pass. In case of software development projects, you know, our project would pass from the requirement gathering phase, followed by a design phase, followed by a development or coding phase, then the testing phase, maybe your debugging phase, or then the installation or commission sir, phase. Sir, right? I just want you to be clear about this. Right now, I'm talking about the project life cycle, right? I didn't talk about the product life cycle yet. So, achha, so this project is a khas phase se guzrega, and then project would be closed after that the deliverable or the product of this project the deliverable or the outcome of this project would start its life and that is called as the product life cycle is it clear for example this is a research and development project in which we are going to launch a new mobile phone or a new technology mobile phone or laptop or car and, and the, at the end of this, obviously, research and development project would pass through various phases. And at the end of this, you know, project, we will get a product, a new product, a new model of a car, a new model of it, uh, you know, mobile phone or, or a new technology based mobile phone. Now that mobile phone would go into into the market and there it will pass through various stages after project is complete that product the project or deliverable of that 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 sorry the product or deliverable of that project would pass through certain stages that is not part of project management 
and it is called as product life cycle. Generally, that new product would be introduced first, right? Introduction phase. Then it will grow, right? People would start purchasing it and they'll get become familiar with it. And then it will reach a stage of maturity where the sales goes to the maximum. And then after a certain time, its sales would, you know, uh, its sales would come down and it would die down after a certain time. So, uh, you know, that technology would be obsolete or something. So here, uh, the, the, this, this part, the introductory stage, the growth stage, then the maturity stage, and then, you know, the decline stage, all these stages combined together is called as the product life cycle. Is it clear? Is it clear? Am I? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, right. So now coming back to the project life cycle, please restrict to the what I'm telling you. I'll address all your queries, but let me finish it in, in a way that I have planned that will you know enhance or improve your understanding, inshallah. Okay, then I'll give you time for the queries, right? So now this is the project life cycle that we initially covered that through what stages or through what cycles or phases our project would pass through and by the end of this it would deliver a product, a service or maybe a result. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Right. So this is called as project life cycle. Now depending upon the nature of product that we are going to produce like either either we are going to produce uh, or construct a building or a road or we we are trying to build a new app or a new software or something depending upon the nature or type of the product that we are going to produce According to that, we will get to know about our requirements. Like there are some kind of projects where requirements are very clear. There are some kind of projects where requirements are very clear. For these projects, it would be easier for me to predict or forecast everything in advance and plan that project as a whole, right? I can plan this project upfront. And in this case, our project would pass through various stages in a linear way, in a, in a sequential way maybe. There may be some overlapping, but you know, once I exactly know what I have to do, like I exactly know, uh, or we people know, uh, you people also know that we have 16 lessons. We have to cover a certain content so what we would do, we will just plan everything in advance that in this lecture we'll be covering so and so topic in the next lecture we'll be covering this topic and so on. And we also know that what are the requirements. We also know what is the scope. We, uh, we also know what is the schedule of things. So that's why we can plan everything uh, you know, in advance. Similarly, if you see, there's no confusion because of which, like let's say after seventh lecture, we would be coming back and we, we might say that, oh, oh we have learned, uh, let's say project risk management mistakenly here. Actually, we had to study uh, project planning. So that is not the case, requirements are clear. But in case, if, if project or, or the product that we are going to build is such that our requirements are not clear, in that case, we cannot plan everything in, in, in advance, number one. Number two, we cannot execute that project in a way, uh, in, in, in a single sequential way. There, we will have to do some hit and trial things, right? Kind of hit and trial things, although this is not correct, but we'll, we'll, we'll you know, talk about, or we'll, uh, the, uh, we'll uh, talk to our customer, we'll sit, uh, sit down, discuss things and then we'll say okay uh, is this 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 the item that you ultimately want and you know then i'll ask them maybe give us 7 days 10 days and we'll we'll produce something for you and show it to you and then you would tell me that is this something that you that you really want to have and then the customer would give us some feedback and then this way 
you know, we might have to go back and build that thing again. Like in case of the uh, the project that I was talking about earlier here, we were not coming back to rebuild or replan that thing, right? Obviously, there was minor rework. There was minor, you know, changes for which we had to come back. But as a whole, uh, you know, we we uh, the major part of it was just linear. We planned that thing once. We constructed or built that thing once, and then at the end of the day, we gave a single complete delivery, right? But here we might have multiple deliveries. We might have to come back and you know change everything. Our requirements change. All the requirements maybe, and start the work work from the scratch maybe, right? So depending upon the clarification about the requirements. Our project life cycle would also change. Now, this is the most important point. I want all of you to be please attentive here. I'm saying that depending Sir, upon. Zoom out. I'm not going to do I'm going to blank screen. Pe kaam kar right? Depending upon. Depending upon. The nature of product, let's say, we are saying that whether we will pass through various stages of the project only once, or we will have to, you know, pass through these stages repeatedly. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, so, sir. So if yes. if we have to pass through a certain uh, you know project or different phases of the project only once we say actually adopted which technique which approach the predictive approach right but if we predictive. have to replan yeah if we have to plan it again and again at the same time if we have to pass through these phases multiple times we come back we do that thing again, then move forward, then come back, redo, you know, that work or improve that work and then move forward. So if we are again and again coming back and then, you know, redoing the things and then moving forward in this case, uh, you know, our development approach is adaptive. We after performing some work, we get to know that requirements were different. Some requirements we have met, okay, fine, but some of them were different, so we again change those and then again come up with some work to show the customer, right? So, look, what we are doing, don't you think that our phases, and what did we call these phases? For life cycle? The phases through which our project passes is called as project life cycle, correct? Yes. SC, you know, right? So, you know, our phases are dependent on our development approach. If our development approach is predictive, past these phases only once. But if our Development approach is what is adaptive. In that case, we will pass through these various stages multiple times. Is it clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Right. So that is why. So you are clear about the difference in development approach and the project life cycle. Are you clear about it? Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. But I'm also saying at the same time that these are two different things. However, our project life cycle is dependent on our development approach. That is why, that is why in your books, in Agile standards, even in PIMBO guide, even the word development approach and project life cycle is you know used interchangeably right the word the term life cycle project life cycle is and 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 the words uh, sorry the development approach these are used interchangeably like in many books 
rather at most of the places you would find that it is written as iterative life cycle adaptive life cycle the incremental life cycle but actually obviously these are development approaches but because these development approaches changes the life cycle as well so that's why we call those life cycles or we name those life cycles as adaptive predictive or something is it clear or shall i repeat it shall i repeat it acha ye ab is khamoshi ko main raza mandi samjhu ke right okay right repeat kar den right this is actually important by definition if you see by definition in that case project life cycle is the stages through which project would pass right by definition project life cycle is the stages through which project would pass is it clear sir however however right? however our this action that if i have to pass through these stages only once or i have to pass through these stages multiple times it would depend upon my development approach if i'm using a predictive approach in that case my life cycle would show me that i pass through these stages only once but in case of if i'm using adaptive life cycle obviously in that case i might pass through these stages multiple times correct sir now it's clear now it's clear right so because our development approach defines what will be my life cycle right it would be my development approach that will tell me that i have to pass through this only once or i have to pass through this multiple times that's why in your box you would find that the term life cycle and the term development approach is used interchangeably you would find in the books that predictive you know uh, life cycle as one word you would find at many places uh, the iterative life cycle rather than iterative development approach is it clear sir clear sir right so just just i just take excuse from my international students because this point is very important and some of the pakistan students might not have understood it so i'm just translating the same thing in urdu right and uh, one of us can you know understand urdu as well so you can translate the same urdu into chinese help me uh, in that right so look main ye keh raha hu ki development jo life cycle hai ki mere project kin phases se guzrega ye hai ki meri development approach kya hai agar development approach predictive hai तो इस लाइफ साइकिल के डिफरेंट फेजेस से मैं एक ही दफा गुजरूंगा लेकिन अगर मेरी डेवलपमेंट अप्रोच वो एडेप्टिव है तो मैं फिर इसके लाइफ साइकिल भी उसी हिसाब से चेंज हो जाएंगे उन फेजेस से मैंने कितनी दफा गुजरना है वो डिपेंड करेगा कि मेरी डेवलपमेंट अप्रोच क्या है इसलिए बुक्स में ये इस तरह नहीं लिखा होता कि आइट्रेटिव डेवलपमेंट अप्रोच प्रिडिक्टिव डेवलपमेंट अप्रोच और समथिंग वो बहुत सारी बुक्स में आप यही लिखा होता है कि ये आइटरेटिव लाइफ साइकिल है क्योंकि जो डेवलपमेंट अप्रोच है वही वैसा ही लाइफ साइकिल होगा सो so, इसलिए जो लव्स लाइफ साइकिल है एंड द डेवलपमेंट अप्रोच है ये एक ही मीनिंग में यूज हो रहा है बट एज ए प्रोफेशनल यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन टू इज इट क्लियर क्लियर राइट सो नाउ सो फार वी हैव कवर्ड थ्री एस्पेक्ट one what is a project life cycle number two uh, that that thanks to hamayu that he asked a question so i covered that point right here and that is product life cycle this starts after the project you know the deliverable of the project is 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 uh, obtained by the end of the project so this this product life cycle starts right okay then actually 
the product life cycle you may say that the moment project started this product uh it, the idea was conceived and you know this uh, product was at the beginning stage maybe however after the delivery this this uh, product came to life and it it started its introduction and growth the third thing that we covered is the development approach correct these are the three points that we have covered now there's another term or that other part that you need to know is project management processes right so project management processes they are done irrespective of what life cycle we are choosing right no they matter five in numbers, sir. they are five in numbers right so yeah. we will we will actually whether whether we are using a predictive life cycle or we are using a you know adaptive life cycle we will actually do these five things that is initiating planning executing planning, monitoring and controlling. monitoring and controlling yes okay. we we may have different you know way of doing it we may have different terminologies uh, using but these five items would be there is it clear yes sir right so now let's have a look on this let's have a look there there are two more things that are still left but uh, let's let's move on to slides now what is project life cycle the collectively project phases through which a project would pass it tells you what you need to, to do the work right for example if the end product is a house to construct that house what you have to do you have to lay the foundation you have to erect the columns and everything and if it is a software you have to collect the requirements you have to design that you have to build that and you have to test it is it clear now what is project management life cycle we just talk about it these are the processes initiating planning executing monitoring and controlling and closing so whether we have a predictive life cycle whether we have three phases whether we have five phases irrespective of that we will actually manage that project you see there's a difference in what in one of the things we are talking about the product the construction work the coding work in case of software projects but how you obviously you have to construct you have to lay the foundation you have to uh, you know construct the gray structure but who would do meetings who would decide which material you have to procure who would sit with the vendors to get you know to get that uh, items who will check the quality you know these are the things which are not directly related to that work these are the things that you study in the project management how you will manage the cost of this project how you will manage the schedule of this project right so these all activities are not directly related to the product development itself these are the activities that you need to, you do to manage that work is it clear Jeez. now look now look here project life cycle what you need to do to do the work the actual work the things that you do to produce the deliverable for example in case of software these are the things that you would do requirement gathering design development testing but this is hardcore you know product development but obviously you need to do some planning things you need to plan your schedule cost estimates resources and quality and procurement and risk and other things in order to do all this work right so project management processes these are the things that you need to do to manage the work is it clear ji now sir. if 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 these sir, phases ji ji sir ye project life cycle project management life cycle different hai different hai na project ji. management project management life cycle mein to initiating planning executing close monitoring and closing and uh, controlling and closing aa raha hai management processes project management life cycle ek hai 
सॉरी मैनेजमेंट हाँ वो एक है मैनेजमेंट प्रोसेस ठीक है बिल्कुल ऐसे गुड ओके अच्छा अब एक चीज और है दिस अनदर पॉइंट दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर एंड इट दैट इज इफ दीस फेजेस आर टू बिग फॉर एग्जांपल सम टाइम फॉर अ लार्ज प्रोजेक्ट और फॉर अ वेरी लार्ज प्रोजेक्ट लेट्स से डैम कंस्ट्रक्शन द रिक्वायरमेंट गैदरिंग फेज और द फिजिबिलिटी फेज वुड बी इन इटसेल्फ वुड बी दैट बिग दैट वी वुड रिक्वायर ऑल दीस फाइव प्रोसेसेस फॉर द फर्स्ट फेज ओनली राइट like we'll have to initiate the feasibility phase then we'll have to plan that feasibility phase then we'll have to execute it monitor and control and at the end of the day maybe after 2 years 3 years we'll get a complete feasibility report and only then depending upon the recommendation of the feasibility report we will move on to the next phase of this project so if our phases are too big in that case, separate yeah. form of if we plan we initiate that project only once then we plan execute monitor and control and then we close at the end but if these phases are too big obviously for these this purpose we might like i gave you an example of a dam construction project and the first phase of that project could be the feasibility project you know feasibility report and that feasibility study might take 2 years and billions millions of amount right so what we do we 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 plan that phase separately we initiate that phase separately we plan it execute it monitor and control and then we close and once this phase is over we this we call this place as phase gate here we will decide that whether we need to move on to the next phase or not right ji and then if if we have decided to move on to the next phase we'll initiate that phase we'll plan that phase execute and close is it clear ji sir clear hai ek ek sawal ji ma'am सर uh, अगर ऐसा है कि हमने uh, आज डिसाइड कर लिया या हमने एक प्रोजेक्ट डिजाइन किया कि हमने uh, जिस तरह की हाउसिंग हा, कॉलोनीज होती हैं कि जी हमने नेक्स्ट uh, इयर्स में uh, जो है वो 300 हाउसेस बनाने हैं लेकिन फर्स्ट फेज में हम 100 हाउसेस बनाएंगे तो उसका पांचों प्रोसेस ग्रुप से वो गुजरेगा फिर वो फेज क्लोज हो जाएगा फिर फेज में जाएंगे अच्छा. Now, this is ji uh, ma'am this is how you would treat it rook when you write you know you write these things in the project at project charter level correct so now it would depend on you actually you know uh, in project management you will find a a problem and that problem is the use of different terminologies sometimes we are using a word as a specific terminology and sometimes we are using that word casually speaking like in its literal meaning of english like when i say the phases through which project would pass it means i'm saying the steps through which project would pass is it clear yeah right similarly if whatever you have said if by phase you only mean that we will do this project in two steps right in this case actually you might have only a single charter a single plan and you know then then you move on it would be written in the charter that whether we have to treat do these two projects officially as separate phases or not if you treat them or treated them in two separate phases you might require a separate initiation a separate charter for the second phase right yeah. many a times yeah. we do this thing in in you know in order to uh, break down the work into smaller pieces for example if if it's a polio ka khatma scheme or project or program and in that you say that it's difficult for us to manage everything in all the districts in one go so what would we do we we, we might start it with a few districts or maybe one province only 
and then we say once then this phase is over and we have learned many lessons and keeping in those you know the keeping in mind uh, those lessons we are going to start or plan our next phase here obviously you would require a separate initiation correct yes sometimes yes and sometimes we sometimes don't. no very right exactly and that is the answer to your question too <laughs> right so it is yeah. it is the man uh, it is the management who would decide whatever you would do it would be written in the charter simple as that so and uh, sir is it like necessary to have all the five processes in each phase like at no, times no 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 no, no that that hmm? At, at times we might have all five process groups in first phase like in case of dam construction the feasibility work we don't want to start the next phase no? until and unless yes. we are done with the first phase and the recommendation of first phase as yes go ahead and do you think that that single approval that we, that was given for the feasibility is also applicable to start the actual dam work no that is a big decision and obviously management would intervene here and they would authorize you again for it you know the end of the feasibility study uh, or that that report you would give some recommendation to the management that we recommend that we should proceed to the second phase and once management will approve that authorize that and that means what we are doing we are initiating the second phase correct yes sir i and have one, a, a... Mm -hmm. I have a different question uh, because uh, there there are a few cases that I've seen and I want to have some clarity on that. Mm -hmm. That we divide a five year project in a two year and a three year project. We 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 just break it in two phases. In the right. first phase, we do the initiation, we do the planning, and we do some execution. And in right. the second, we go with the full execution and the closing. So very right. right in that happening is it like a proper thing to do no no ma'am it is all subjective look now let me explain you number one if you have planned everything in advance when i say plan do you know what i'm saying planning the whole scope the whole wbs the whole estimates if you have done everything you know in advance what would you do you are only deciding one thing that let's start one work at a time and once this is done this is done then we'll start working on the next step but we have already planned ready for it fine yes right let me give you an example of it and you can relate that example with with your uh, you know scheme look if i plan that i need to construct a plaza that is let's say seven stories correct right now one way of constructing that plaza could be that i decide to first construct the gray structure of all seven floors then enter into the electrical and plumbing work and everything then go the go by the finishing what i'm saying I have made the plan for all of these floors, correct? And other way of doing it is, it could be that I plan that while I would be constructing the gray structure of second, third, fourth floor, I will start the finishing work at the ground and the basement level. Is it clear? Yes. Uh, and really once clear. once this is done then i'll move on to the rest of the four floors i actually want to rent out these things earlier this is my purpose but i have prepared the complete plan and estimates and everything right in the beginning so in this case my project is initiated once planned once and executed once but the execution steps are different Right. This is what this is what your case was, I guess. Yes. That sir, right. sir, जैसे आपने वो पोलियो वाली दी है example. जैसे हम अगर हम five साल का 
पाँच साल का को कोई प्रोग्राम लॉन्च करते हैं तो हम पहले कहते हैं दो साल जो है हम प्लानिंग वगैरह हम सारा कुछ वो सारे प्रोसेस के स्टेप कंप्लीट कर लेते हैं लेकिन हम कहते हैं पहले दो साल हम जो देखेंगे रिस्पांस क्या है और उसके मतलब क्या इफेक्ट्स आ रहे हैं उसके बाद जो तीन साल करेंगे वो उसी प्लानिंग के बेस पर होंगे लेकिन यही मैं कह रहा हूँ यही मैं कह रहा हूँ अगर तो आपने इस तरह प्लान किया कि प्लान सारा कर लिया प्लान सारा कर लिया ठीक है लेकिन हम कह रहे हैं कि क्योंकि हमारे पास इतनी रिसोर्सेज नहीं है एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिवली इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर अस टू एग्जीक्यूट एवरीथिंग इन वन गो लाइक इन केस ऑफ इलेक्शंस व्हाट हैपेंस वी कंडक्ट इलेक्शंस लेट्स से थ्रू आउट द कंट्री बट इन 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 इंडिया देयर इज अ यू नो दैट इज अ बिग कंट्री एंड इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू होल्ड द इलेक्शंस इन वन फेज आवाज नहीं आ रही कंडक्टिंग दैट प्रोजेक्ट If you have planned everything in advance, but you just executing in bits and pieces, then you don't need re-planning. That would be uh, this case, this one. Can you see it? And you have done planning was. once, but you are. Yeah, hear you properly. I think Baki will start. You are in the car. Obviously, you are in the car. This will happen. Okay. okay. that in if if this is the case that you plan everything for all the steps all the phases in in at once so this is the case but sometimes you say that we don't we will not move to the next phase until the first phase is clear and to enter into the second phase you again require an authorization so what you do you only plan the first phase why to you know plan everything if we are not sure that we'll be entering the next phase like in case of feasibility if you you know you cannot move to the next phase if your feasibility is is not productive so why you are planning you know how you will acquire, uh, you know purchase the land how you will construct the dam what materials you would re- require why to plan that thing right that to be and honest that, plan mm-hmm. we have invested a lot in planning in, of dams yeah yeah okay so okay look the purpose here of of segregating this these phases is to you know uh, to move safely and we don't want to you know put in our resources time effort money unnecessarily for a work which about which we are not sure that whether we'll execute it or not let me give you an example let's say you have to construct your house you have spotted uh, four different societies housing societies and do you think that you will plan house construction work for all the four societies or first you will do the feasibility and pick one point or one area where you are going to construct your house and then you do the rest of planning what do you think or you will plan you know construction of houses in all four areas whereas you have to construct only your house in only one of the societies did you get my point yes sir right so with this now let's move on to the next thing that is product scope and project scope you know this is the point that will actually that relate to the 
project uh, the the product life cycle uh, sorry the project life cycle and the project management processes whatever you do to produce that product it is the project life cycle and whatever you do to manage that work is the project management process correct we have already addressed these these points so you know uh, uh, that's why i'm not repeating it okay so now here is the project yeah here's the project management process look here our project was initiated then it was planned then we executed it and during this work throughout this this obviously we monitored and controlled and then we closed that project so this is project management life cycle is it clear yes okay so now well, these are the slides that just tell you one thing that is the uncertainty and risk is high in the beginning but you know this reduces with the passage of time but the amount of at stake it is very less in the beginning and you know uh, the amount at stake is very high once you have almost developed your project for example in your second semester god forbid do you think will you think of you know quitting your degree in the third semester you had awesome. spent a lot of time you you know you but in first semester in first few weeks obviously your amount at stake the effort that you have done is very less so you can take that decision but in the beginning the uncertainty was very high what would be your gpa will you be able to get a good gpa or you know uh, get through with this degree program or not but now you are in 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 second semester you are already you have an idea about you know uh, your scores and you know that you you will get through this so uncertainty and risk it reduces with the passage of time amount at stake obviously it increases with the passage of time and cost of change in the beginning the but if you have to make changes once you have done a major portion of your work obviously to change things at that time would cost you a lot correct such yes sir right so now here are the three life cycles in front of you the first is project management life cycle and the project life cycle right project life cycle is the same thing that i just covered in the beginning project life cycle is the phases through which project would pass let's say requirement gathering designing let's say uh, testing and then implementation development, and development, development and, and and obviously testing and implementation and with this you know the project man management life cycle goes along with it we need to manage all this work as well however the product life cycle obviously it continues after that this is a time where project is developed obviously and then it goes into introductory phase obviously then it grows 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 its sales increases people get to know about it and then at the end of the day it it reaches a maturity level and then that technology or product you know its sales goes down and and you know it it comes to a decline phase is it clear that's good okay now these are the project phases the you know this is all uh, we have covered many a time so i'm just skipping it project phases could be project phases could be sequential or these phases could be overlapping let me explain you this thing here i'm very much clear sequential phases very right so in case of sequential phases what we would do we will complete one phase and then we will start the next however in some cases once one phase is almost covered or let's say it's half 50% done or 30% done or 40% done we can actually move on to the next phase now let me give you an example of it let's say you are writing uh, uh, you are studying the pmo right 
and in PMO, you have to write a report. I guess uh, you know that. <laughs> you have to write a project That's report, right. big report, right? Or let's say it's a research thesis that you have to write. Now, one way could be that first you write the introduction chapter incomplete, and then you move on to the next chapter. And one way could be that once you have written the introduction chapter, you are still writing it, but you you got clarity about the things. So you would you might start the field work, the research work as well in parallel. Is it clear? Overlapping. Overlapping things. Yeah, overlapping. So some hota isi tarah. Most of the time you you don't unless unless there's something very risky or uncertain. This very risky thing or uncertain thing where the amount at stake is very high, you will not, you would not like to invest in the next phase till the time first phase is done. For example, if your prototyping is not done, why do you do prototyping? Because you don't want to, you know, invest in a full-fledged building or something before you don't create a model which is approved by everyone. Okay, yes, this is the thing. Now we are clear. So this prototype is fine. Now we can go to the full-scale development. This is only done when the cost of the next phase, that is full-scale development, is too high. So in that case, just to remain safe, we complete one phase at a time. Is it clear? Yes, but, sir. but generally, but generally, but generally, when costs are not too high and we can take some risk, we go in the you know in this uh, overlapping phase relationship. Here, however, please remember one thing: whenever you try to do things in parallel, like when you drive, you try to attend the phone call, there are certain risk introduced, and major and, and rework it increases. Rework increases, right? Like in case of in case of the example that I just gave you, like you are still writing the introduction and and the you know the methodology that you will adopt to go for the research, you just start the field work in parallel. And after some time, you realize that oh, oh the whatever I had you know, in the field work, you realize that things are, you know, not going well and you had made some mistakes. And in that case, you know, you will have to come back and rewrite your introductory part, isn't it? Whenever we do things in parallel, we increase the risk. However, we reduce the schedule. In case of sequential re relationship, we cannot reduce the schedule. We have to do things in parallel, but in case of, uh, sorry, in, in sequence, but in case of overlapping, you have the ability or you get a chance to reduce the schedule, to compress the schedule. This thing we will study maybe after the midterm as well. We call it schedule compression, the fast tracking technique. The fast tracking, you can just write it somewhere maybe, and we'll, we'll study this thing in detail, and that is, we start doing activities in parallel to compress our schedule, to reduce our schedule. Correct? Yes, sir. Right. So this is project life cycle planning and then the development approach. This is the topic that I had already covered. What is project life cycle and what a development approach is? I told you that these, like essentially by definition, these two are different things. However, because it is our development approach which defines our project life cycle as well, that's why in your books you would find that, okay, predictive is a development approach, adaptive is a development approach, iterative is a development approach, incremental or agile is also or are also development approaches, but since these define our project life cycle as well, that's why we call these approaches as life cycles too. 
like we say predict predictive life cycle the iterative life cycle the incremental life cycle and the agile life cycle is it clear sir they are also plan driven and change driven and hybrid these exactly sir exactly these are development approaches but obviously these define our life cycle too that's why these two terms are used interchangeably correct is it clear yes sir yes right right so now let's let's take a break of 20 minutes i guess it would be enough right i'll try to finish it early maybe so we, we can resume okay let's make it 25 minutes right so we'll resume at 7:30 will that be fine sure say why not <laughs> Okay. Okay. Right. So we'll meet again at seven thirty. I'm just stopping the recording, and I'll just put everything on mute and just use the same link to join. Or you can also put things on mute and leave. Right. Okay, sir. Right. Okay, Thank you so much.